وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We are continuing this series based upon the statement of Allah Azawajal وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, call upon me and I will answer you. This series on dua, its etiquettes, how to make dua, how to increase the chances of your dua being answered and how to remove some of the things that block dua from being answered as well as an explanation of many of the comprehensive dua or ad'iyah that the Prophet ﷺ used to make. And to begin this episode, I want to talk about how Allah Azza wa Jal answers the one who calls upon him and makes dua to him. And sometimes, subhanAllah, we, we need to understand this, to understand the essence of what the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba." Make dua to Allah while you are certain that he is going to answer you. And the purpose of this discussion in this episode is to give you that confidence that Allah Azza wa Jal will answer you. And to give you that yaqeen that when you make dua, and this is one of the etiquettes of dua, when you raise your hand, you make dua, you genuinely believe that Allah will answer you. And this is surprisingly rare. Because a lot of people fall into a trap from the traps of the shaitan and they say, how will Allah answer me? I'm so sinful. I'm so disobedient. I don't do the things that Allah commanded me to do. I don't keep away from the things Allah commanded me to keep away from. Uh, I'm calling upon Allah and last time I asked Allah and he gave me and then I didn't fulfill it properly. I didn't show gratitude to Allah properly for it and all of the things, and then a person gets into the feeling that Allah will not answer them. And the reason this is such a, a dangerous trap to fall into, we can take it from the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ And this is in multiple places in the Qur'an, it's in Surah Al-An'am, Surah Al-Zumar, uh, many places in the Qur'an. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ they didn't give Allah his true just estimation. They didn't think of Allah as he deserved to be thought of. And we know the famous statement of the Prophet ﷺ, that Allah said, the Prophet ﷺ narrated that Allah said, I am as my slave thinks of me. So it's so important for a person to understand that, that it's not the greatness of your sins but it's the greatness of Allah Azza wa Whatever sin you have done, Fallahu Akbar. Allah is greater than that. And the forgiveness of Allah is greater than that. And the mercy of Allah is greater than that. And when you imply or suggest that the sins you have will, uh, you know, that, that your dua will not be answered, there's many problems with this. But one of the things is it implies that Allah is not merciful enough to forgive you or not generous enough to forgive you, or not kind enough to forgive you. They didn't think about Allah as He deserved to be thought of. They didn't think about Allah as He was deserving of being thought of. Rather, Allah is greater. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than that. Now, that doesn't mean we don't fear. We don't fear the mawani', the things that block our dua. Of course, we have to try to remove them. We have to fear them. But nobody should be starting off dua in, and with a mentality that my dua will not be answered. No doubt there is a fear over your sins, but nobody should be, be starting with the principle that my dua is not going to be answered. And we're going to show that through the, the topics that we're going to cover uh, now, inshallah ta'ala, starting with a hadith narrated by Imam Abi Dawood and At-Tirmidhi and others in there or in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, in the Jami' of Imam Al-Tirmidhi, Rahimahumullahu Ta'ala, and others narrated it from Salman Al-Farisi, radiyallahu an, an the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, annahu qal, inna allaha hayyiyun kareem, yastahi min abdih, idha rafa'a yadayhi ilayh, 
an yaruddahuma sifra. Subhanallah, what a hadith. This hadith is, to be honest, this hadith is hard to do this hadith justice in explaining it, subhanallah. Allah is hayi. Allah is hayi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shy. Allah is kareem. Allah is noble. Allah is, sh Allah is shy of his slave. When he raises his hands to him to return those hands empty. Subhanallah. How great is Allah? How great is the mercy of Allah? How great is the forgiveness of Allah? How great is the karam of Allah? The generosity of Allah? How great is the kindness of Allah? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels shy to return your hands empty. You disobeyed him. You were ungrateful to him. You turned away from him. You disregarded his commands. You fell into his punishments. And Allah jalla fi ula, majestic in his highness, is shy to return your hands empty. How can a person hear this hadith and then doubt when they raise their hands that Allah will not answer them or that Allah will answer them, feel doubtful that Allah will answer them or, or feel reluctant. I don't, know, I don't think my dua will be answered. If a person feels that their dua will not be answered, then I fear that this is actually from a person's ignorance about Allah, not knowing Allah properly, not thinking of Allah the way he deserves to be thought of. Subhanallah. How great is Allah and how great is the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah Azawajal. And that doesn't mean that we don't have the rahbah, the fear, and the khawf that we have problems and sins that could be a cause to block our dua. But we still have that hope in Allah Azawajal that Allah Azawajal, His forgiveness and His mercy and His generosity is greater. And in the hadith, which mentions the, that Allah Azza wa Jal descends to the lowest heaven in a way that suits His Majesty Jalla fi Ula. And in this hadith, Yanziru Rabbuna Tabaraka wa Ta'ala Kulla Layla Ila Sama i Dunya Hina Yabqa Thuluthul Layl or Thuluthul Layl al Akhir. Our Lord, blessed and exalted descends every night to the lowest heaven when a third of the night remains. فَيَقُولْ مَنْ يَدْعُونِي فَأَسْتَجِيبَ لَهُ مَنْ يَسْأَلُونِي فَأَعْطِيَهُ Who will make dua to me so I will answer him? And who will ask me so I will give him? مَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُ لِي فَأَغْفِرَ لَهُ Who is it that will seek my forgiveness so that I will forgive him? This is a hadith that was narrated from are almost 30 of the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum wa ardahum narrated this hadith from the ahadith al-mutawatirah that are narrated by many, a huge number, so much so that there is no doubt regarding the hadith uh, or there is no need to even investigate the details within it because of the no huge number of people that narrated it. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who will make dua to me and I will answer him? Who will ask me and I will give him? Who will seek my forgiveness? and I will forgive him. Does that not give you confidence that Allah Azza wa Jal will answer your dua? And in a hadith, which is a hadith Qudusi, a hadith which the Prophet Sallallahu narrates from Allah Jalla fi Ula, that Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ Whoever shows enmity to a beloved servant of mine, I have declared war upon him. وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ And no servant of mine comes near to me with something أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا مِمَّا افْتَرَضْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ More beloved than that which I've made obligatory for him. وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ And my servant doesn't cease to come near to me through voluntary deeds until I love him. فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُ and if I love him, كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يَبْصُرُ بِهِ وَيَدَهُ الَّذِي يَبْطِشُ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا وَإِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّ وَلَإِنْ اسْتَعَاذَ بِي لَأُعِيذَنَّ 
And if I love my servant, then I become the hearing with which he hears and the sight with which he sees and the hand with which he strikes and the foot with which he walks. And if he asks me, I will certainly give him. And if he seeks my help, I will certainly provide him refuge. And this hadith is narrated by Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih. The shahid from the hadith that we wanted, وَإِن سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّ وَلَإِن اسْتَعَادَ بِي لَأُعْيذَنَّ If he asks me, I will certainly give him. And if he seeks refuge with me, I will certainly give him refuge. Does that not give you confidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua? Al-Imam al-Tirmidhi and al-Hakim, and this hadith was declared sahih by al-Hafid ibn Hajar, from the hadith of Ubadah ibn al-Samit radiallahu an, that he narrated it from the Prophet sallallahu that he said, مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مُسْلِمٌ يَدْعُوا بِدَعْوَ إِلَّا آتَاهُ اللَّهُ إِيَّاهَ أَوْ صَرَفَ عَنْهُ مِنَ السُّوءِ مِثْلَهَا There is no Muslim on the face of the earth who makes dua with a dua except that Allah will give it to him or Allah will repel an equivalent evil from him. SubhanAllah, there is no Muslim. And notice that it doesn't even mention there is no Muslim who is pious, there is no wali, there is, there is no Muslim, any Muslim on the face of this earth that makes dua to Allah except that Allah will give that dua to them or Allah will remove and repel an evil which is equal to the dua that they made. So just I just want you to think about something in this. Just think about when you make dua again and again and again, and you're consistent in making dua. فَعْبُدْهُ وَاسْتَبِرْ لِعِبَادَتِهِ Worship Allah and be patient, consistent in worshipping Him. SubhanAllah, think about it. The first time you make dua for something, maybe Allah doesn't give you the thing that you want immediately, but Allah removes something evil from you that was going to happen to you. Allah repels it from you. Then again you make dua and Allah repels something else from you. And again you make dua and Allah repels something else from you. And again you make dua and Allah repels something else. And maybe a person is thinking, oh, subhanAllah, my dua is not being answered. And you don't know Allah has answered your dua tens of times over. But you don't perceive it. You don't see it. Allah has answered your dua again and again and again and again. And you're thinking, oh, you know, how long am I going to make dua like this? And you don't realize that Allah is just answering your dua again and again and again, but in different ways. There is another hadith that expands upon, or expands upon this. It's a hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad al-Bukhari narrated it in his book Al-Adab al-Mufrad, not in his Sahih. Al-Hakim narrated it also from the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu an, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, ma min muslimin yad'u bi da'watin laysa fiha ithmun wala qati'atu rahimin illa a'tahu allahu biha ihta thalath. There is no Muslim who makes dua, who supplicates with a dua, and that dua contains no sin, nor does it contain cutting off from relatives, except that Allah will give that person one of three things. SubhanAllah, think about this. First of all, we understood there is a condition. This is why jamma' al-ahadith is so important, bringing all of the hadith on a topic. Maybe you covered the first hadith, and maybe you think that, this you don't realize that there are conditions for this and the condition is the dua must not be sinful it must not be a dua to cut off from your relatives you know either cursing them or asking allah to cut off from them or asking allah to get them out of your life or a dua of asking allah for haram or, or to facilitate the haram for you so the dua has not got, not got any of these things it's not got any i'tida in it we're going to talk about this later, inshallah ta'ala, in a subsequent episode, that the dua doesn't have any transgression in it. Then Allah will give you one of three things. Either Allah will bring about the answer to your dua immediately, and you ajil quickly, and in the immediate term, Allah will make your dua come true. Or perhaps Allah will store it for you in the Akhirah. And think about how much you might need that. 
perhaps you are on the edge of being thrown into the hellfire. And there is nothing between you and the hellfire except a dua that you made to Allah, asking Allah for something from the dunya. Asking Allah for something that wasn't important, but you asked Allah, Allah saved it for you. And Allah stored it for you. For that day when it comes and it takes you from the edge of the fire and you become from the people of Jannah. Don't ever think bad of Allah that my dua wasn't answered. Maybe Allah is just storing all of those dua that you made, those ad'iyah that you made, the dua you made, Allah is storing it up for you for Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Allah is storing it for you, keeping it for you, for Yawm Al-Qiyamah. That's the second way that Allah can answer your dua. وَإِمَّا أَنْ يَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ مِنَ السُّوءِ مِثْلَهَا Or otherwise Allah will cause an equivalent amount of evil to be repelled and taken away from you. قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِذَنْ نُكْثِرْ They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, then we should make a lot of dua. We should make, you know, does that not mean, you know, will we not just be making a lot of dua? We should make a lot of dua. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, yani Allah is, whatever you are going to ask for, Allah is gonna, gonna is, Allah can give you more than that. Allah will give you more than that. Allah will be more than that. SubhanAllah. However much you make dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not tire of it. However much you make dua, Allah will not become tired of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be ready to give you more and more and more. However much you make dua. So you make dua which is free of i'tida, of transgressions. In other words, it's, it's done properly. One of three things. Either you get it there and then in the dunya. Either Allah saves it for you yawm al-qiyamah when you really need it. Or either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repel an evil from you that is equivalent to what you ask, not a small evil. It's not like you asked Allah for Jannah and Allah Azawajal removed an, a small evil from you, like you know, a small pain or a small evil. Rather, it will be what you ask for, Allah will remove an equivalent evil from you. SubhanAllah. How gracious and how merciful is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that just shows us that you know, we, we have to think think correctly of Allah Azawajal. And we have to turn to Allah and we have to strive to make dua and be confident that your dua is being answered. Even if you don't see a result in the dunya, in front of your eyes, perhaps Allah knows that it's better for it to be answered next year. And in the meantime, all of the evil things are being kept away from you and you're being raised levels in paradise. And you still get what you want in the dunya the year after. How merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But one of the things we did take from this hadith, which is really important, is we took the fact that dua has shurut and mawani. There are conditions and there are things which prevent dua from being accepted. This is so important because it leads us to an understanding that it's not the case that we just make dua however we want. And it's not the case that we can just ignore the etiquettes of dua or the rules of dua. Dua is an ibadah. Al ibadah, how is ibadah? Ibadah is tawqifiyya. It's done the way that you're told to do it. You don't have an option to do it the way you feel like. Dua has, like every ibadah, dua has shurut mawani, conditions and things that prevent it. Like zakah, for example, zakah has conditions, certain types of wealth has to reach a certain amount. The, a certain amount of time has to pass in many cases. There's conditions and there are things that prevent it. There are things that prevent that from being, from being payable. Every ibadah, salah has conditions. Your prayer has conditions. It has things that prevent it. The presence of najasat, of impurities and things like that. Uh, it has conditions like that the time should have started and so on. Every ibadah has rules and regulations. And dua is no different. And we took that from the hadith where it mentions al-ithm and it mentions qati'atu rahim. It mentions cutting the family ties and sins. That those are two things that would be mawani. They would be, they would block your dua from being valid and acceptable to Allah. That if you asked Allah for a sin, 
Like somebody said, what a'adhu billah, Allah, we ask Allah's refuge. Somebody said, oh Allah, help me to commit zina. Uh, or somebody said, oh Allah, and they asked for, oh Allah, uh, take my parents away from me. So this dua, you're not getting anything in the akhirah and you're not getting anything in, it brought for you, it's not being answered for you and the evil is not being repelled from you because it, it didn't meet the conditions of dua and it, did, it wasn't free of the impediments that stop your dua from, from being accepted. So that's something which is really, really important to, uh, to think about. Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, فَإِنَّهُ أَيِ الدُّعَى مِنْ أَقْوَى الْأَسْبَابِ فِي دَفْعِ الْمَكْرُوءِ وحصول المقلوب. He said, Dua is the strongest of causes to repel, you know, hated and negative and horrible things from happening and to bring about what you wish for. ولكن قد يتخلف عنه أثره. But the effect of the Dua could be lost. It might not come the way that it was expected. إما لضعف في نفسه بأن يكون دعاء لا يحبه الله لما فيه من العدوان. Maybe because of a weakness in the person, such that their dua is something Allah doesn't love because it has transgression in it, it has something haram in it. وإما لضعف القلب وعدم إقباله على الله or either because of the heart's weakness and not turning to Allah and not bringing it together and and, and Focusing on it in the time when you're making dua. فَيَكُونُ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْقَوْسِ الرَّخُ جِدًّا It will be like the example of the weak bow. فَإِنَّ السَّهْمَ يَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ خُرُوجًا ضَعِيفًا The arrow is very weak when it leaves the bow. If the bow is, is very loose and weak, when you fire the arrow, the arrow doesn't really go anywhere. He went on and he said, وَإِمَّا لِحُصُولِ الْمَانِعْ مِنَ الْإِجَابَةِ And it might be, i.e. the reason why the effect of the dua is not seen, is because of the presence of something which stops it being answered. مِنْ أَكْلِ الْحَرَامِ From eating that which is haram. وَالظُّلْمِ An oppression. وَرَيْنِ الظُّنُوبِ عَلَى الْقُرُوبِ And the, the, the marks of the sins upon the heart. وَاسْتِلَاءِ الْغَفْلَةِ وَالشَّهْوَةِ وَاللَّهْوِ وَغَلَبَتِهَا عَلَيْهَا And the fact that the heart has been overcome and conquered by غفلة, unaware, being unaware, and shahwa and desires, and lahu, and the, you know, attachment to amusements, things like music. The heart's become attached to them, and they've overcome the heart. They've overcome the heart. And then he mentioned, كَمَا فِي مُسْتَدْرَكَ الْحَاكِمِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةِ رضي الله عن عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أُدْعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَنْتُمْ مُوْقِنُونَ بِالْإِجَابَةِ وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبَلُ دُعَاءً مِنْ قَلْبٍ غَافِلٍ لَهَ Make dua to Allah when you're certain, in a state of being certain that He will answer you. And know that Allah does not accept the dua from a heart that is unaware that is come that is it has these features in it it's a heart that is unaware that is full of distractions and diverted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he said fahada dawa'un nafi'un muzirun lidda he said there is a medicine which is beneficial and it will take this sickness away walakin ghaflat al-qalbi عَنِ اللَّهِ تُبْطِلُ قُوَّتَهُ He said the medicine of dua will take these sicknesses away when your heart is unaware and it is distracted it's going to take away the strength of this medicine وَكَذَلِكَ أَكْلُ الْحَرَامِ يُبْطِلُ قُوَّتَهُ Likewise, devouring the haram stops the strength of this medicine the medicine of dua وَيُضْعِفُهَا And it weakens it كما في صحيح مسلم من حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الناس إن الله طيب لا يقبل إلا طيبة وإن الله أمر المؤمنين بما أمر به المرسلين 
إن الله طيب الله is طيب الله is pure and good and Allah only accepts that which is pure and good and Allah commanded the believers with the same that he commanded the, the, the mursaleen the messengers with فقال يا أيها الرسل كلوا من الطيبات وعملوا صالحا إني بما تعملون عليم he said O oh, oh messengers eat from that which is pure and good and do righteous deeds and indeed I am all knowing of what you do and Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَقَالْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ Or you who believe, eat from that which, from the good, the pure things and the good things that we have provided for you. ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ الرَّجُلْ يُطِيلُ السَّفَرْ أَشْعَةَ أَغْبَرْ يَمُدُّ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ يَا رَبْ يَا رَبْ وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامْ وَمَشْرَبُهُ حَرَامْ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامْ وَغُذِيَ بِالْحَرَامْ فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لِذَلِكَ Then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned a man who was on a long journey, dusty and disheveled. He raised his hands to the sky. He said, Rabb, Ya Rabb, my Lord, my Lord. But his food was haram. And his drink was haram. His clothing was haram. He'd be nourished upon the haram. So how would he be answered in this? So what we take from this amazing statement of Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala is that dua is a great medicine for so many sicknesses. For almost all of the sicknesses that affect a person's heart, that affect a person's life, dua is the medicine. But this medicine can become weak because of things that are there. And that's not to despair and say, well, how will I change? How will I change my, my food to be halal, my lifestyle to be halal? My, how will I become from the, how will I, you know, make my dua tayyib, something good and pure? that Allah will accept. But to realize that changes need to be made in order to remove the things that block your dua from being accepted. And that when you start to make those changes, you see the effect of that on the dua, on the dua that you make. And we're gonna come back to this beautiful hadith, inshallah ta'ala, in a subsequent episode, but that's all we have time for this time. And Allah is the best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't wanna miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.